Hi, I thought I'd narrate one of these picture stories. It says me the task of adding text to each particular image. Um, what we have here is an experiment with solar air heater. I see from previous postings that they are generally referred to as solar furnaces on the other side of the pond. But hey, that's just semantics, so let's continue. Hi, we, the, the ones you've seen on YouTube uh, tend to be made out of beer cans, which is fine of course. Beer cans are free if you drink enough beer, which I certainly do. Uh, but the, advantage, the disadvantages that I've seen are that they seem to be quite difficult to seal between each other. You also need to cut the top and bottom of each can. So what we decided to do was to use a standard sort of HVAC slinky. This is a 10 meter coil. Uh, it's aluminium foil, it has a, a, a sort of reinforced wire stiffening throughout, it's also plastic coated on the inside. It also has a surface which is angular and crinkly. This has two advantages, one in that it actually absorbs more heat, it has more surface area to absorb more heat from the sun. And also, uh, it uh, allows the, the air flow through to become more turbulent, which allows the air to pick up more heat. Now here you can see the, uh, one of the, this is the outlet. Uh, the, the frame is made of, of insulating material, and this is just the coils laid out in the frame and simply pushed through the ends, the inlet and the outlet. This is the material that we've used. It's called Celotex. It's very common in the UK. It's used for um, insulating between cavities um, in a new home construction or a garage construction. Yep, here you can see the, uh, the slinky coil laid out here. This is a 10 meter slinky coil. It cost about 12 pounds delivered from AV, which is about 18 bucks. Yeah, again, we can see just for the purpose of the experiment, we, we, we kept the coil in place by tying it simply with garden wire at the ends. Here's the, the finished sort of inner assembly where you can see the coil. It has the inlet at the bottom left and the outlet at the top right. Uh, it's a slinky coil within the insulating box. Um, this is the, the same box, so this time off it's uh, when it's been sprayed with uh, black high temperature paint. The paint we use is just standard high temperature paint available for automotive or stove use. It's nothing special. And here's a, a sort of a finished version before we've removed the masking. We kept the masking on because I thought the idea that the sun might strike off the shiny sides of the internal insulation material and reflect black into the coil. And here you can see we've jumped ahead of ourselves now. We've actually mounted the insulation material within a wooden frame and you can see the uh, this is the outlet which is actually set um, into the frame and you can see the uh, we have the temperature probe just wired in position. Yeah, so you can see here is the uh, the, the coil mounted uh, within a, a wooden frame. This is just to give us some strength and rigidity to carry it around and prop it up against walls and things. Um, it's also it's got a glass frame uh, on the front. This is one of the static car caravan window frames that we bought as a job lot for our solar panels. You can see here there's a bilge blower which we use to push the air through the coil. This is a, a standard item on many small boats, the idea being that you evacuate the bilge of any potentially explosive fumes before you put sparks in when you try to, to fire up the engine. Yeah, so this is the experimental setup. We've got the thermal panel in its frame, glass covered on, on the right and on the left we have a, a photovoltaic solar panel which is directly driving the blower. This is a 36 cell panel, it's nominally 18 volts. Uh, the blower pulls about 2.5 amps and we put the meter across it when it's running and it's almost exactly 12 volts that it's pulling.
This was a, an early Saturday morning. It's uh, now reached steady state conditions. It's about 17 degrees on the inlet and 39.40 on the outlet. Uh, the the blower is powerful enough to, to be able to produce a jet of air even at the outlet after it's gone through the forward reverse sequence sort of 10 or 11 times and it's pushing out uh, around about 4.3 meters per second. Now if you do the sums, which are quite simple for me, I'm a professional engineer, you take that measured airspeed and the inlet and outlet temperatures and you get a you, you get a result that the heater is producing about 500 watts. Now this is quite a significant increase over a photovoltaic panel which would only be about 100 watts for the same area. Um, but photovoltaic yeah, panels are notoriously inefficient and they usually only work at 11 12 percent efficiency. So, from these numbers, you can see that this panel is running at around 55 66 percent efficiency. Yeah, so we're now looking at practical applications for this piece of kit. Um, we think that the blower would have enough sort of oomph to maybe push enough air through two panels connected in series. Um, it obviously we need to check this, but this would mean if, it, if we could use the same blower and we could double the temperature differential, um, then obviously we'll, we'll get a, a, an outlet temperature of maybe 50, 60 C, and that would be great for pumping directly into the home. Or alternatively, in the outlet, we could make a coil from something like brake pipe material and again using the photovoltaic panel on the left we could uh, drive a pump that would uh, be able to circulate its water and save the water in the tank, the hot water in the tank for, for use at a future date. Okay, thanks for watching.